View components are an awesome feature in ASP.NET Core that allows us to take advantage of the power of Razor view pages, the language features of C Sharp, and combine them into nice components that can be included in Razor pages. These components are totally isolated from the view page itself. In the functional world, we call those pure functions or pure components. That basically means that you pass a parameter into them and you get 100% predictable results. No side effects, in other words. Let's get started now and build ourselves a simple ratings control with a view component. Like I said, this view component is going to include a C Sharp file and an associated razor or markup file. This short video is a companion to the full article listed in the notes below, as well as shown here with a YouTube annotation. There is nothing in this video that is also not included in the article. Also, all the source code for this article is on GitHub at the URL github.com slash pkellner slash progress telerik blog view component. Let's get started now in Visual Studio 2017. And from scratch, let's build a web project with ASP.NET Core 2.1. So to do that, we say file new project. We choose ASP.NET Core web application. Let's call it web app. Again, web application, ASP.NET Core 2.1. We remove configure for HTTPS for convenience. That includes web pages, which is where we'll enhance our project. In our pages directory, let's create a subfolder called components. And in components, let's create another subfolder called Rating control. Now, in rating control, let's add a C sharp file called rating control view component. We want that to implement view component, which is one of the ASP.NET Core classes. And in this class, we simply want to put a constructor and we want to put an invoke method, which is one of the required methods that needs to be implemented inside a view component. That invoke method is simply going to return a default view page, which we can scaffold a razor view for. And by default, it's just going to have a string as the model. Let's simply output that string. And now you can see in our rating control directory, we have default.cshtml, which is this file we're looking at, and the rating control view component, which we wrote a second ago. Now let's create a simple Razor view page that uses that component. We do that by saying add Razor page. Let's call that rating control invoke async. Let's not generate a model and let's not use a layout page. And let's insert into our body an invocation of that view control we just wrote. The syntax is add await. The add, of course, transfers us into writing C sharp code. And then we're going to execute the static class component with invoke async. We pass the name of the rating control, which in this case is rating control. And then we have to pass it an anonymous type in order to get a string as a parameter into that rating control. If you remember, when we look back at our rating control, it takes one value rating control type as a string, which gets passed into its default CSHTML or Razor page, and then displayed as the model. So if we run this page, start without debugging, then browse to rating control invoke async, we can see we actually get the component outputting its result 1 to 10. So looking back at our Razor view page that invoked that component, eh, it could be a little better. So how could it be better? Well, tag helpers. It's amazing with tag helpers how little we actually have to do to make this really clean. So what is that? Well, let's create a new page, rating demo tag helper, unchecking generate page model class. And now there's only two things we have to do. We actually have to tell the page with a razor page directive that we're going to use tag helpers. Basically, we're going to use the built-in VC tag helper prefix, 
I know that's a mouthful, for this web app namespace. And in the body, we're actually going to paste in the tag helper that invokes the view component. There's VC, our tag helper prefix. Again, that's built into ASP.NET Core. The name of the rating control in kebab casing, rating dash control. And then we pass in the one to 10 parameter as simply an attribute to the tag helper itself, rating dash control dash type, again, kebab casing. And now when we run this page, we get exactly the same output as we did the parameter passed in and the default razor page of the view component rendering it. Tag helpers just make this a very clean way to work with view components. I feel a little bad because I've concluded making a rating control that actually doesn't do anything. To make up for that, I have found online a rating control written in jQuery called jQuery bar rating with a very friendly MIT license that you can use from the author Antenna AIO. And I've incorporated that into our example. Here's the project that we were working on, but I've added some things to it. For example, in www root, I've got a lot more CSS added. Under pages, I've significantly expanded our rating control view component to handle different rating levels. As you can see here, we have different rating levels and different rating types, pill, one to 10, movie. And then I've made more complete examples, which for example, I've named rating demo complete. Scrolling down to the meat of the demo, you can see I'm using the same tag helper VC rating control Pass in the attribute rating control type one to 10. And in this case, rating control ID value 101. So now when I run this, we get some very nice rating controls. You can see as I hover my cursor over, they automatically change. Same thing with movie rating. I have Ajax built in so that you can deal with responses. When I click on that, it's a selected rating E ID value 103. Anyway, you can do a lot with these rating controls rather than just my simple hello world demo I built for you earlier, though that is the basis. All the source for the example is in the same GitHub repo I mentioned earlier and mentioned in the notes below this video. So feel free to run those yourselves and see how I actually developed that. I hope you've had a chance to read the article also that goes along with this video and that you've learned something in the process. ASP.NET Core really is a very interesting space. If you want to learn a lot more about tag helpers, I have a video on Pluralsight that in three hours basically explains everything you ever wanted to know about tag helpers. And of course, I have six other videos there covering topics, including things like React. All my videos are linked from peterkellner.net. And of course, if you search for me, Peter Kellner, on the Pluralsight website, you'll also find my videos. Thanks for watching.